Good afternoon. This is Guillermo Sabatier, the, your host for today, and I'm the Director of International Services for HSI, and welcome to Perspectives on Energy. Uh, today, I'm going to discuss the, um, after this midterm election, you know, what are we going to expect, right, given given what's happened, right? Now, there's been a slight shift in uh, in, in the House. Uh, looks like Democrats may retain uh, control of the Senate, but there's definitely re Republican control of the house so what does that what does that all mean with regards to energy policy right well today i just so happened great timing i i went to one of the uh, webinars for the u.s energy administration usca.org and uh, they pretty much had like a good hour discussion on kind of pretty much what i suspected and i got a few more insights but uh, let's go through a few of these. I, I'm sure some folks are have a, are a little unsettled given the fact that, that the power has shifted slightly. But uh, overall, I think I got a pretty good feel for a lot of bipartisan um, bipartisan cooperation. Uh, it looks like a lot of um, a lot of the Republicans that were elected, and I'm gonna say it. It seems to be a victory for moderates. Um, looks like the days of extremism, one way or the other, are, are kind of like tapering down. And we're seeing, I guess, what we call cooler heads prevailing in that, in that sense, right? Um, that that being said, I mean, uh, uh, former President Trump declared a, uh, he announced that he's going to run for election. Uh, Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida, where I live, uh, hasn't really specifically said he's not going to run for president. So we'll see what happens, even though he just got elect reelected for governor with a, with a wide margin. So chances are we may see some more of that in the future. But let's dive right into it. I had a few notes from today's uh, webinar, and it is quite interesting, some of the things that we talked about. Um, well, one thing that we might expect, of course, to see is, is they, they, are, they have made already announcements that they will get, go into some kind of oversight hearings, whether that is the Hunter Biden situation or that is uh, anything having to do with the, uh, with the Ukraine and the Bidens before this election happened. So that may detract from a lot of the policies that we're looking at um, when it comes to energy or even the uh, Inflation Recovery Act, right? The IRA, they call it. So uh, probably along that that line, there may be challenges to the Biden administration's IRA. And But for the most part, one of the things that I saw, the, the recurring theme was, especially from the right, Republicans, was a lot of discussion regarding innovation. Uh, they, they are fully on board with the fact that uh, we, we cl climate change is real and the fact that they need to uh, make more of a move towards a carbon reduction. But um, we may be pulling back from this whole uh, all or nothing approach towards let's get there at all costs, but rather they'll have a more diversified, reliable uh, march towards that that final climate goal. Right? And one of the things that they, they, they talk about quite a bit, of course, was nuclear energy. Uh, it seems like that that is definitely making quite the comeback. There are a few projects already in the works, and uh, one of the things they're going to see quite what I, which I said before in previous shows was small modular reactors, micro reactors. Those things are definitely going to be at the forefront of this uh, revolution. So it seems to me like um, uh, you have a presentation there from the Nuclear Energy Institute, and uh, what they were discussing was the fact that they already have a number of projects already underway. Uh, there's a new scale uh, nuclear at Idaho. There's another one in the Tennessee Valley Authority. They have another project that's gone there with this, uh, GE Hitachi, and may many more, at least five others that, that that they sounded off. So that is going to be quite a change. Um, the interesting thing, of course, is going to be the fact that um, the NRC is, or the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is already, uh, has a pretty big backlog on approving a lot of uh, a lot of these projects that have been submitted. So really as quickly as they can approve them, usually they, uh, and of course those projects will be, will be uh, carried out in areas that welcome that type of technology, right? Uh, you may see that in certain areas, specifically when you have a transition from coal. Uh, in a lot of places, you see a lot of these facilities that are being uh, retired, namely uh, coal-fired plants. And it becomes uh, quite severe for, for the community, the economy in that area, especially in localized matter. And for the most part, these are mostly uh, cooperatives, uh, rural cooperatives, rural municipalities. And they are the ones that are hit the hardest since they're not getting a lot of access to gas pipelines. So... Um, 
sure, uh, replacing a coal-fired plant with some wind farms and renewables sounds great, but that is uh, not a steady base load generation that is highly variable and generation that's not easily dispatched. Uh, we saw what happened in some of the states where they have a lot of renewable resources and uh, the variability and the impact that had on reliability. So we'll see. We'll see what 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 comes from from this particular change. But one of the things that 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 they did discuss, of course, is that there's going to be um, possible political advantages, but rather economic advantages to areas that that uh, request and embrace and welcome this this uh, type of energy resource. Um, certain states, of course, are going to benefit a great deal, especially when they have a lot of industrial loads. And uh, this may be a pivotal point, especially if we plan on bringing manufacturing back to the U.S., uh, which it seems like we're, we're looking at as well. Uh, the other challenge, of course, is they're, they're still looking at widespread EV adoption, and that will be linked with uh, distributor energy resources, right? So as more and more solar gets up on rooftops, you may be seeing... Uh, quite quite the acceleration of uh, electric vehicle adoption. Now, that is a two parts of a multi-part plan. Eventually, once you have the batteries and the solar, which is usually is your vehicle, or you build, for example, a power wall, like a Tesla power wall, then the next step would be, of course, for the utilities to be able to dispatch that as a generation resource, or better yet, being able to aggregate that and treat that as a virtual power plant. And that's something that may, we may be seeing a lot more of in the next few years. Now, uh, one of the things that in, that they discussed regarding uh, innovation was, of course, in, in great part, is the is is the advancing of uh, nuclear technology. Right now, we're 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 using technology that dates back to the '80s, and a lot of the, a lot of countries that are competitors are definitely uh, they made some leaps and bounds ahead of us. So we have we 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 don't have that far to catch up, but we definitely have some catching up to do in the regards that there have been more investments in that field overseas than we've done here so but pretty 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 sure that we're going to uh, with it within this decade we're going to definitely meet if not surpass the rest of the world in nuclear um and of course that will be nuclear that's going to be dispatchable much like you see in france so interesting times and of course that'll be probably the the way to be able to meet these uh zero carbon emission goals as we go towards 2035 2040 even 2050. So that is one of the things that they discussed. Uh, the other interesting thing that that we that we're looking at is um, definitely a great opportunity for a bipartisan uh, approach to solving these these energy issues, right? And the other thing, of course, is that they're going to be treating energy as a national security. Uh, they're looking at it from a national security perspective. No longer will this be um, just uh, let's get to zero carbon emissions at any cost. It'll be, well, how is this being weaponized against us and how do we better position ourselves to be able to leverage you know, both this, this uh, zero carbon emission renewable resources, but at the same time, make sure we have uh, energy security and energy reliability. Uh, of course, that, that also has an impact on whether we attract the uh, in industrial projects to these areas because if the cost of energy is too high um, these projects will simply go elsewhere uh, and that could be another country but that can also happen internally to the u.s right so you may have a region where energy costs are really really low compared to others a uh, perfect example of that is uh florida for now has, has a rather low a low cost of energy compared to the rest of the country so that in in turn is attracting a lot of industry not just from states with uh, like California and, and and the Northeast, but even they're attracting uh, industrial and co industrial and commercial customers even from Texas. So we're seeing that happen already. So I see a lot more of that movement taking place, and um, industrial opportunities will probably uh, pop up right where there is a low cost of energy. Right. So uh, pretty exciting things coming up as well. So in that that regard. Now, one of the things that also were was interesting in the fact that um, there has been a lot of concern, given the fact that there there is the 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 economy played a major role in in this change in the election, but at the same time, it, it's it just seems like like it wasn't going to be the the red tide everybody feared or expected. Uh, for some folks, you know, it's it it was a welcome news. For others, they they were disappointed. They wanted to see a bigger tide. For others, they were rather relieved. It wasn't that that severe. 
So all depends on where you stand on the political fence. But uh, the point is that the change was moderate. And uh, speaking of moderate from a different perspective, you know, it's it's um, hopefully less extreme from either end, right? And uh, as they were saying, right, with, with these political changes, right, and nobody wanted to see if, 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 if there's a moderate right uh, candidate, the last thing they want to see is somebody get around them f- to the further right. Same thing with a moderate left candidate. They don't want to see a, a candidate go get ahead of them that's from you know further left. So ideally, everybody wants to work around a center, and that seems probably the best way to kind of uh, see if, uh, in that regard, at, at least in energy policy, right? We can probably maybe maybe agree and move forward and actually get some things done. Um, another concern they had, of course, was uh, just simple. There probably will be more natural gas pipelines, natural gas uh, exports, natural gas extraction, and uh, and the all, in all likelihood we're going we're to see a lot more pipeline and drilling taking place. Uh, we have an abundant resource in that regard, and we'll probably be able to sell that to our allies in Europe and make really good use of that resource. Um, now, that being said, I mean, Europe right now is 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 on the verge of experiencing some, some kind of uh, energy shortfalls, you know, especially since winter's already begun. So uh, in, in most cases, we'll, we'll help a lot of our allies and our friends avoid buying natural gas and energy from Russia. But, you know, there are countries that are still buying it from them, right? whereas India, Turkey, and and in some part, Poland as well. So that, that'll be an interesting turn of events, especially with what's been happening recently over there in, in the Ukraine. And uh, given that, it's it's uh, there's also a concern, right, uh, when it comes to energy, what, you know, what would happen with how we support the Ukraine, how we support the, their struggle against Russia. So uh, part of that, of course, is... is um, Ukraine, for the most part, is very self-sufficient with energy, but they will be needing more help with the actual equipment and infrastructures, given the fact that those are suffering constant attacks during this conflict. So we'll, we'll be seeing what happens there. Um, the, right now, there's seems to be some likelihood that the, we'll continue with that support, even though there's opposition to supporting that uh, that effort uh, in support of Ukraine. So that is a concern for some for some. So a couple of other things that we saw, uh, there was discussion of our, of, of course, of everything else that, that that we've learned is there's there's been a great deal of emphasis on reliability. Um, it, what happened with the renewable resources in the in, in the last year, whether it was California or a couple of other states, uh, that variable resource does not does not really function well when reliability is is a must. So some of the solutions, of course, are more battery, more storage. Uh, others are use hydrogen, but usually the 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 overwhelming solution to that is 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 uh, use a transitional fuel, which is natural gas when it's available. But it just seems for the near term and within within this decade, nuclear is making a resurgence, and that's something that we will see. Uh, going forward in the shape of small nuclear reactors. It more than likely will not be those large nuclear facilities. It'll be something rather small and then lots of them everywhere. Now, uh, one thing that I really don't, of course, that all depends. And I, I like I said earlier, that all depends whether the area that uh, that particular area is is uh, is accepting of that type of resource, right? Or rather, they welcome that. Hawaii may not be as welcoming as opposed to, say, Texas or the Midwest or the Northeast or or even in Florida. Uh, Florida has two separate nuclear facilities, and uh, California has not decided to to delay the shutdown of their last nuclear reactor. So, so of course, that is those are very large facilities. Um, I suspect you're going to see a lot more of those deployed throughout the country. And uh, for example, these large facilities are, are about 2,000 megawatts. These SMRs are about 30 to 50 megawatts a piece. So you may be seeing hundreds and of thousands of those deployed throughout the country. Um, and of course, that, that may be more common, commonly seen in uh, rural areas or cooperatives, generating cooperatives especially. Um, there was a, quite a bit of discussion regarding hydrogen and uh, generating uh, either the blue or the green hydrogen. That would be another form of storage. So um, there's a few entities that are out there out trying to, to, to develop that. And of course, that, that fell into the realm of innovation uh, along with batteries. So that technology, of course, is something that they're, they're looking into. 
Um, granted, the fact that lithium batteries are really uh, mostly slated for automotive uh, purposes, the utility scale battery more than likely will be the heavier, less expensive uh, iron salt type of technology that can that can be cycled hundreds of times, if not thousands of times. So we'll probably be seeing some more of that as well. And um, one of the other things that we noticed as well during that discussion was the fact that um, there definitely uh, quite quite a uh, quite a lot more uh, drilling permits will be issued, and uh, so that will that we will see maybe not as much as oil, but definitely there'll be permits for for natural gas. Uh, as far as the price of of, uh, of uh, transportation fuel, the gasoline, petroleum, diesel, that that is definitely something that may be addressed uh, at some point regarding what we're looking at here. Um, diesel is there's a definite shortage, so they'll probably be addressing that first, and uh, followed by regular automotive gasoline. So now, what kind of impact will that have on the economy? More than likely, it'll it'll probably motivate the economy, but that that of course will have some minor impact on carbon emissions at this point. So, so that's that was pretty much it. I mean, a, a, a lot of discussion involving involving some of the um, some of the uh, concerns regarding the political climate. Um, fortunately, it it wasn't the for, for for some folks. You know, they're they're really concerned about a red wave, uh, but for the most part, it was a it was a slight moderate correction in that regard. And now there's kind of like a balance between Senate and, and House, and so we'll see what happens then. Um, mind you, the, the, there's still a runoff election happening for the Senate uh, coming up soon, so we'll see what senator is is elected out of uh, out of Georgia. So that'll be an interesting race to watch. That may determine how things work. I mean, it, in all likelihood, it might stay the same as we have it now. But definitely, definitely some changes coming coming down the pike as we enter this uh, what they call this lane duck section, and then we start uh, January with a whole new um, whole new uh, political makeup in in the House. So uh, now uh, going back to the uh, Inflation Reduction Act or the IRA, there may be some pushback on that. There was a lot of opposition in initially when when uh, when they were first trying to get that approved. Now they're you know that they may go back and maybe maybe not abolish some items on there, but perhaps make some amendments to it and changes regarding that particular that particular act. So we will see at that point what that might be. But again, it's usually done with the spirit of innovation, and that is what you're hearing a lot from the Republicans, right? Usually it's a lot of innovation that they're looking forward to. <clears throat> and even for example, states like Texas, right? Texas is as red as it can get. Yet twenty, sorry about that noise. Yet twenty five percent of their uh, generation mix for their peak was either wind or solar. So, so there there is definitely a move and acceptance for renew, renewable resources, even in the reddest of states. So the, the only challenge there is that they want it to be more reliable, and have a better mix, and of course have it uh, deployable. So we look forward to that, and uh, again that'll hopefully be a change that we look forward to in that regard. Um, so that I think is all we have in a nutshell regarding these uh, political changes and what we saw happen after the election. Um, not a lot of change in that regard, but definitely we're going to be seeing a move towards um, nuclear, maybe some challenges to the IRA, uh, a little bit of, of oversight hearings, but um, and then a lot of bipartisan work and a lot of focus on innovation. And a lot of that innovation will probably be in the form of new forms of nuclear energy and small modular reactors. So that's all I have for today. Um, thank you for joining me. And um, if you have any questions or have any comments, please feel free to write those below. And we'll try and respond to those. Thank you again. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii.
If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.